Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 64 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series. A full stack of episodes in the Let's Play. Always a good time. Uh, today's episode, we are going to ramp up our production of nuclear waste. Last episode, we got it going, uh, and we started turning said nuclear waste into polonium, which is going slowly but surely. I've since turned off my reactor. I could always turn it back on if we wanted to, and everything's running nice and smoothly. No big problems are happening. We're generating about one millibucket uh, of, of nuclear waste per tick, and we can see that down here with the rate limit, uh, right? So max burn rate is one millibucket. Nuclear waste is one millibucket to one millibucket, so it's, it's straight, you know, one to one. And uh, long story short, it's very slow. But that's what happens when you make a really teeny tiny fission reactor. I promised you guys that we would ramp it up and make something much bigger, and thus, here we are. We're gonna be doing that. So what I wanna do first is just make a bigger water-cooled reactor, and then what I wanna look into is making a large salt-cooled reactor, which is apparently more complicated, but also can generate far more nuclear waste, I think. But I'm not super sure. So we're gonna figure it out together. Uh, so what I've decided to do here today is build what I'm gonna call a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven by seven by seven reactor. Does that sound cool? I think that sounds cool. Uh, so we're gonna basically replicate the reactor design here, but seven by seven in. So it's gonna be much larger. Uh, so we want basically a one, two, three, four, five, six, and then a, you know, seven by seven up here, and we should be ready to go. Nice. All right, so let's do some quickie math. Uh, what I think I want from mechanism assemblies, I think we want 13 control rod assemblies, right? And then 13 times four, which would be 52 fission fuel assemblies. Did I math that right? Oh, we're low on lead ingots of all things. Rough, rough. That's right, we're gonna have to take care of that real quick. Uh, I, You know what's surprisingly funny is I ran I ran my my quarry for a bit, and I would have expected more lead, but uh, apparently no such luck. So let me go deal with that real quick. So wow, lead is rare, right? Let's compare, like we've got 5.4 thousand iron ingots, right? We, like I've ran this thing, you can see I ran my iron, well, we've got a lot, right? We've got a thousand of tin, uh, how are we on copper, 2.3 thousand? copper and we've got 247 lead. Wow, lead is rare. Holy cow is lead rare. I think this calls for a digital miner. I think uh, I think that's cool. I know I said I don't love uh, you know the simple blocks like the digital miner but I'm gonna go out on a limb and say meh. Meh is my response to that. Uh, you know when in doubt sometimes it's uh, important to do the things that make life a little bit easier. And I'm okay with that. I am I am okay with that. We're gonna definitely just need a whole bunch more steel, aren't we? Alright. So I'm gonna real quick whip up a digital miner and set one of these dudes up. And hopefully this should be easy. So we need a robot. Uh, and then we need one. Two, let's get like just a handful of these ready to go. He's thinking about it over there. There we go. Digital Miner is super cool in that it's really good at selectively mining. You can specify exactly what you want to mine in a relatively large area and it won't waste any time getting exactly what you want and in this situation we're like i just am flush with most resources but when it comes to you know lead for some reason i am really 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 badly low so let's get a few things right we're gonna get some of you and we're gonna cook up one of these guys and that should be cool so we got ender chest we got power we got that let's also get some mechanism upgrades like speed and energy that could be cool and let's go somewhere that makes sense. I'm going to pop over to my astral temple. 
Okay, this is like a nice enough area to set up our digital miner for now. So what we're going to do is plop this bad boy down. Uh, and he's got a really complicated UI. It's not that bad though. Trust me, it ain't bad. Uh, we can go ahead and insert our speed and energy upgrades like so. And that's pretty groovy. Now he's got lots of upgrades. He's got lots of power situations. I my, uh, okay, I should probably sleep through this night then. I thought my thingy reached out here, but I guess not. Not the end of the world. But yeah, we don't want creepers and zombies, thank you. Ooh, you know, thanks. I pass. I pass on your existence. Oh, and I need to... Turn, I had this. Hello. Yeah, I know. You guys go away. You can come out. Yeah, that should be good. Alright, dude. Come on. Just die in the sun already. Alright, looks good to me. So, power we can pop down on the side. That should be you. Ta-da! Beautiful. So lots of power. This thing will use a decent amount of RF tick, but really not as much as you'd think. Um, and then the way this works is we want to configure him and we can specify filters on what to ex pull out. The radius max is 32. I'm going to set it to 63 and you'll see it'll bump back down to 32 because that's it. Uh, you can set the range on the Y0 um, to 60, right? So I'll bump that up to like 100. And we're going to do a new filter. Uh, tag based filter because I want all lead ore that exists. Now there's only really one lead ore and if you F3H turn on advanced tooltips you can see what the tag is. So if we look at block tabs we'll see forge colon ores that'll get you all ores or forge colon ores slash lead that will get you just lead. So we want forge um, New item stack. No. If we had the item stack, we could do it, but we don't at the moment, right? I put it in the refined storage system and it probably got processed already. Uh, so we'll just do tag forge ores lead save. And you'll see that it populates an image of what that looks like. So you have an idea of what you're going to get here. So with that filter on, and we don't want to turn on inverse mode, otherwise that'll mine everything except lead ore. Uh, if we turn that on. So we just want lead ore, that's what we get. Spoiler alert, this thing can totally dig up tile entities among all other things. So if you just like have an empty filter and turn on inverse, it'll literally just clear out a giant area, including your tile entities, including your base. So be careful with the digital miner. Just letting you know. Just letting you know. So if we do that, we can also turn on auto eject, auto pull, soak touch. Don't have to worry too much about those for now. We're just going to hit start. And what we should see is it'll tell me how many uh, lead ores it found in this 32 block radius from Y level 0 to 100 and something. Sweet. Uh, and if we really wanted to be fancy about it, we could pop our ender chest on top. Cool. And uh, turn on auto eject. I hope that's where you go in the top, right? Or the back. Isn't that what auto eject does? There's no sidedness config to this, so that should be all there is to it. Oh, hello. Yeah, you were still in 7x7 seven seven mode, weren't you? Not a big deal. He retains his inventory when broken. Aha. And retains all his settings. Aha. So that's cool. So yeah, you're totally the output spot. So auto eject on, all is well. Start. Why are you not auto ejecting? Funny thing to not do. I mean, that's also an output spot. Oh, hello. He auto-ejected there. I could have sworn the top was a valid output as well. It's the same color, so I would expect that to work. But long story short, uh, we have lots of lead happening now. And he's really quick, by the way. So if you just want to use the digital miner for all your mining operations, that's cool. I have other ideas for future episodes on things I want to do for generating resources uh, beyond the create machine, beyond the digital miner. But because I don't want to do that now, I, you know very much just said let's whip this up and do the thing cool so to home james and boop 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 and you should now be processing what i would call a copious amount of lead down here good job everybody iron clumps too huh but lots of lead clumps lots and lots and lots of lead hopefully that's enough to get the control rod assemblies that we need 
So we said mechanism assembly, we want the 13 control rods, and then we said 52 fission fuels, right? Because 13 times four is 40 and 12 is 52. Hooray, we have enough lead now. Look at that, beautiful. So back to our nuclear reactor. Ah! Why did I blow up? I legitimately don't know the answer to that. I don't know why I blew up. That's not a good sign, though. That is not a good sign at all. Well, yeah, no, something bad happened. What happened? Did we run out of water? We shouldn't have. Everything was set to... It looks like my steam is full in my turbine. Well, that's bad. That is bad. Well, I think there's a radiation suit we can get. Uh, mechanism, there's some kind of protective suit. Hazmat, yes. We want this, this, we're gonna want some more orange. I'm a little concerned here, because I was pretty sure I had everything pretty well protected, and now I am not so sure about that, right? I may have irradiated the area. Nobody panic. <laughs> Totally on purpose, too. 100%. 100% not on purpose. Oh, so close. Wow, that went from 0 to 60 in, like, instant, didn't it? Yes, it did. That went from zero to sixty. All I want to do is turn the reactor off. I should have I should have implemented a protection thing, and I didn't, and that's on me. But if I can just scram you, oh wow, why am I blowing up? I guess the radiation's really bad over there, huh? Well, that's a thing. That's a thing. How can we stop this from happening at the moment? Mm, let me think. I think my only hope here is to. Wow, yeah, no, really definitely not gonna make it, hmm. All right, what are the chances this'll do something about it? Protect me, golden apple. Oh, not even close. I don't think I have a recourse other than mech radiation remove all with cheats enabled. So I'd really like to see, really fam? What is up here? Why am I blowing up if I removed radiation sources? Yeah, he should be clear. What is going on here? I'm trying to figure out what's up. Until I figure out what went wrong. Let's do creative mode. So yeah, your temperature is definitely hot. Yeah, the damage number is high. So I guess he's leaking radiation. So what actually happened here? You should be dumping excess. So why did your steam fill up? Why did steam fill up? That doesn't make any sense. Oh. But dump excess was on. So setting it to dumping... But dump excess was on, so shouldn't that be fine? That's what I don't understand, right? Dump excess was on. I mean, I claim bug. And I only say that because I want to remove this radiation and have not guilty feelings about doing so. But dump excess was on, which means it should have dumped excess, which means we shouldn't have run into this problem in theory, in theory, right? So let's get, I guess a Geiger counter, is that right from mechanism? I'm gonna let that thing cool off. I wanted to see how bad things are here. So now, today turned into a lesson in radiation, but that shouldn't have happened because dump excess was on. I'm just saying, dump excess was on, right? 99.99 NSVH, I guess that's okay, because this is gonna be, I mean, yeah. Yeah, we got some redness over here. But why am I dying so fast over here in the orange numbers? I guess orange is bad too. <laughs> Look at all my deaths. <laughs> hey guys, this is what happens sometimes, okay? So this thing's damage is really high. I wonder if damage goes down at some point. Um, he's cooling still. 
We've got water in the coolant tank. You are still pumping water in, right? Yeah, pretty much. So he's pumping water in. The water is cooling off the temperature. The temperature is rapidly going down because we turned it off the reactor. But yeah, with this set to dump excess, I would have expected the steam... I don't know, like, what is dumping excess here, but he shouldn't have stopped. He really shouldn't have. Everything should have been fine. I mean, with dumping turned on, he immediately cleared himself out and was good. But, I mean, is it because the internal buffer of power filled up? What I could do is get, like, a, a an energy trash can for now. Because I think that's a thing. Is that a thing we have in this pack? Energy trash cans? I'm pretty sure we have a trash can mod with all types of trash cans. But energy trash can is definitely a thing. So what we could do to be safe. Ah, that's not what I wanted to do. Hold on. Yeah, I'm in creative mode. I forgot. <laughs> well, we just voided a bunch of stuff. Whatever. If we do that... And I'm going to delete this. Well, I mean, that was not really a full dupe, but yeah. Uh, so if we turn off this, so he's generating a lot of energy now and just voiding it. But why are we not using up all the steam? We should have no problem using up all the steam we're getting here. But that's going to help with the coolant a little bit, right? Yeah, coolant tank's going up, temperature's going down. Trying to understand what happened here, because this should be fine. This should be capable of handling all this stuff. And until I understand, see, look, now the steam's going down. Well, that's cool. Did you cool off all the way? Is that what happened? Yeah, your temperature went down to like a reasonable number. So your damage value is what now? Is it still going up or is it going down? 3209, 3208. So I guess it's going to take a while before damage resets down to zero. And what about the radiation in this area? Pretty high compared to... Yeah, it's really hot right here, right? And it's going to go down over time. So if we keep an eye on this, we'll see it's going to start going down. It dissipates over time. So if we just wait, it should be cool. Now, if I remove it, we're, we're happy here. But you're probably leaking a little bit still, or not not because you're on. All right, so I should be able safe to come out of creative mode now. So this is how you deal with radiation. You cheat it away, or you go into creative mode. Hooray! My hazmat suit's back. Many a hazmat suits. Uh, where did I die initially? Probably this is my main death. So I'm gonna store an extra radiation suit here. That lot of good you guys did. I mean, I grant that the radiation was absurdly high to the point of, yeah, that's a lot. But still, that lot of good you guys did. I'm just going to delete my obituaries because I don't really need them. And let's get our actual stuff back. Hooray! Stuff's back. All right, so you go in here. You go in here. Not, not what I had planned for the episode, but... Well, sometimes crazy things happen. I guess this is a good reason to set up the turn off in case of emergency button, which we're going to set up. I had planned to set up um, in the in the new system. And we will, we will absolutely be setting up in the new system now. The new reactor was going to have a turn off in case of overheating. Right? Still don't know why the steam went so crazy. I'm trying to understand that. Also not 100% sure why the hazmat stuff didn't work out so well. Alright, everything seems nicely organized now. Could use a helmet. Hey, I've got Insight 2 Helmet. Or I could have Mana Boost and Gourmand. I guess we'll use Insight 2. Alright, so what happened to you? Why did your steam get out of control? That I don't fully get. That I don't super get. I guess it's because this guy? Because he's still producing steam. 3185. 
I wonder if there's like a tile entity I can break that'll reset that damage. I mean, I can only assume there is, right? But if I'm not planning to run this guy anymore, I don't think it matters super much. And he'll eventually fix himself, I presume? Yeah, but his temperature, despite being turned off, is still high, and he's still producing steam. You know, I just don't understand. Now, if I turn you on, I'm just curious. Will this... will this hurt? 3180. I'm just curious if the damage will go up or down now that the thing's on. And radiation. I should probably get the... Geiger counter. That's right, I left it in this chest over here. You know me, just trying to understand. So your steam's going in still. Steam's breaking even right here, which is what I would expect to see. No radiation, so that's good. How'd you guys do? You're fine, polonium pellets. We didn't even produce that many polonium pellets, to be fair. Nuclear waste. You're not running because it's nighttime, right? That makes sense. I'm trying to understand. Where did this go wrong? I feel like dump excess didn't work, and I don't know why. Right? I feel like dump excess didn't work, and I don't know why. I mean, you are breaking even on steam still. So where did this go wrong? Is it because the internal buffer filled up, and because dump excess didn't work? It Like, if I set it to dumping, it's not going to produce any power. See? I mean, I guess it will a little bit. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure where the problem laid. It might be the it might be the power, just because we filled up our internal buffer. But I thought dump excess would cover me. I guess it doesn't. Well, today we learned. All right, I'm just trying to make myself feel better about the fact that I had to cheat with creative mode to get back here. But I really feel like you know I did for the most part, set things up right, and it didn't behave the way I understood it to behave. I'm gonna double check the the turbine wiki real quick. All right, so I think I understand what happened. If the energy fills up to the max, it completely stops the turbine, including the dumping of excess steam. So because the energy filled up, it doesn't dump excess steam anymore. I don't love that, I feel like that's weird. Like, I would think that dump excess means dump excess whether your energy is full or not, but I guess that's intended design, so, eh, you know me. I'm like, eh, eh, on it. I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, uh, let's get back to work. All right, so our control rod assembly, right? Um, so we want to put the control rod assemblies on the top in like a checkerboard kind of pattern. So something like this. And then we want fuel rods going all the way down from them. Cool. And that should be good. Beautiful. Mathed it out correctly. So that looks like a pretty good setup, I believe. Um, the other thing we're going to want, obviously, is we're going to want fission reactor ports for all the things, right? So we're going to want four of those reactor ports. Okay. Three for in, and we definitely should have a reactor logic adapter. After our little nuclear incident, we should look at how to handle this, right? Uh, we might want another one of these, actually. Let's make two of them. So you got them coming, and then we got some of these happening. Shouldn't be too bad, I would think. There you go, sweet. All right, cool. So we're gonna want water in, uh, and a pretty hefty amount of water in at that. I might set up multiple pumps for this purpose. Uh, let's get a couple pumps, yeah. Yeah, three might not be a bad idea.
One, two, and three. Beautiful. So we could have one, two, three, which means we're going to want more ports, by the way. So get me another. I believe these come in sets of two. Yes. So get me two more of those bad boys. Okay. And we will configure them input only. Yeah. So I want you guys to all be pumped water. Cool. And we'll get some buckets. And we will put pumps like so, I believe. Yeah, you're, yeah, that should be fine. I can do that. Put the pumps like this, right? And then we can have ultimate mechanical pipes and ultimate universal cables. And what I'll do is I'll do this, this with a flux point. Cool. And then upgrades from mechanism, we're going to want 24 and 24. And we'll upgrade all these guys in a sec. Let's get three buckets of water while we're waiting on those upgrades. Boop, boop, boop. Cool. And then what we're going to want to do is place these guys. And mechanical pipe, yes. You should be allowing in, shouldn't you? Fission reactor port, yes. Maybe because you're not formed yet. It might be because he's not formed yet. All right, um, let's have nuclear waste come out here. Okay, so you can be output waste. You can be input. We're going to want another quantum entangleloper. Okay, and while we're here, let's prepare you to be none, you to be none, you to be none, and you to be none, so that we can then have ultimate mechanical pipes doing this and this. Cool. And then our upgrades. For all the waters. And then let's save ourselves the pain of energy cost for that. Reduce that a little bit. Sweet. And now you should be filling up lots of water, which will be good. This thing needs a lot of water, by the way. So we have output waste, and now we just want to do output steam, right? So let's turn you off for a minute, sir. See, his damage, his damage is going down. He's only at 3,101% damage. He's fine. He's fine. Let's get, um, we have two more ports, which is perfect. So I want a port here. And your job will be output coolant. And you can be a port. Maybe I want another port. Maybe we want like four more ports. Sounds like a good time to me. We might have to finagle this a little bit, but we'll figure it out. We'll go with we'll go with two more for now. You guys can be inputs. Okay, and remember, it's the turbine vents that we get stuff out of. So let's do uh, mechanical pipes. Like this. It's not beautiful, but it'll get, you know. Normal and normal and none. So I should now be able to have this, this, and none of these connect. And that seems pretty cool.
and get more ultimate mechanical pipes. Oh, good, I have more. Good. Let's just request more for the future when we know we're going to need them. Beautiful, right? So dire wiry. We love it. All right, and then you are going to be a gas output. And what we want is another turbine valve. And that will go towards steam input here. So I can break you without too much of a fuss, right? Hooray, reformed, steam still happening. You're still cooling with all your damage and whatnot. And then we can, you will cross to here. And then in theory, when we place these guys, he should form and everything should be pretty good. So we got water coming in. You guys all did the thing. You're the light blue guy. You should be ultimate pressurized. Oh, I did ultimate universal cable. Well, there's your problem, folks. Dire, please. Ultimate pressurized tube. Do we not have any pressurized tubes on us? Universal cable, mechanical pipe. Pressurized tube, okay, we do. Cool, so now you're ready to do that. So see how much water we have now? We also have the capability of having a burn rate of 52 millibuckets per tick. So I'm gonna start around 10 before I turn this thing on, right? Let's get our quantum entangleloper here. You're gonna go right here. You're going to be the this dude, but before I do that, let's make sure, uh, what is it, gases should be output on the right. And there's no other things coming in on this network, so it shouldn't matter. So if I set that, he, and also gases eject on, he should be getting fissile fuel. See how much more buffer there is for both fissile fuel and water? Big deal. Um, you want this water to be pretty full before you kick this bad boy on. And we can see he, you know, these guys are all doing their best. Um, it'll be a closed system still, so we should be safe-ish, right? But we'll find out. Uh, let me give this thing some time to fill up with water and we'll be right back. And let's not also forget our radioactive barrel here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and have a pressurized tube ready to do his thing. Now, when we activate this, he's going to consume a bunch of water real quick. So we want to have a good buffer in here before we turn it on. So that's why I'm waiting for it to turn on. But once it uses up that big bulk of water, it should enter like the closed looping system. And what we'll have is a bunch of water turning into steam, turning into energy, and now putting back as water. And it should be okay. And <laughs> I said that about the last one, didn't I? And we still irradiated all our chunks despite how careful I was. Yes, we learned what happens. You want to avoid your energy. Just... Full stop. <laughs> Void your energy, folks. That's all I can say. And despite this thing being stopped, we're still, because our temperature is still a little bit high, right? It's a thing. All right, this might be enough, but let's get ready to turn this off if things go bad, right? So when we activate this guy at simply 10 millibuckets per tick, his coolant tank goes down, but see how it didn't go down much? We're generating 200,000 millibuckets per tick of steam. You seem to be okay with that and stable over here. So let's ramp it up now. Let's bump it up to 20. Now we're at 17 buckets in here. And you're cool. 40 brings us down to 15 buckets in here. We're doing 800,000 millibuckets per tick of steam. You're doing pretty high on steam input, but look, it's stable, right? Which is what we want to see. We're also generating 913,000 RF a tick, and we're not even maxed out. Can we bump you up to 50? Yes. Coolant is okay. Steam is really borderline, but I think we can now bump this guy all the way up to 52 millibuckets per tick, which keeps our coolant here. Uh, that's all looking good. And you are really maxed out, but I'm thinking dumping excess is happening. And part of this is because this guy's running. So we could have a larger turbine uh, if we wanted to handle more steam. Uh, but we are definitely on the borderline of what we can handle here. 
turbine wise luckily dumping excess is on otherwise we might start having more problems right but uh if i bump you back down to 50 what so yeah look at that we're not even doing that stuff okay okay cool steam's coming down now so we're stabilizing at this number so if i set you to 51 Seems pretty even. Okay, that's cool. So the react the the turbine that we built it looks like it can handle fifty two millibuckets, right? Which is exactly so. These guys are actually exact, right? The reason we're doing fifty two is don't forget this guy's still generating heat, right? He's still generating heat even though he's turned off. I think he's still generating steam. I think so. Uh, we're doing good, but dumping excess should keep us covered. But we're doing a million RF a tick, and more importantly, we're generating quite a hefty amount. Oh boy, you're full. <laughs> He's already full. All right, uh, scram. <sighs> Everything off. All right, what we got to do is uh, run our, our pipeline to this guy, right? Uh, so let's not... Her? No her. I don't want any, I don't want any her. How am I not hitting you? How is it even possible to not be hitting you right now is what I want to know. No, huh? All right, so in here, we're going to go down. And we're going to be very careful. Are you, like, burning fuel right now? I'm assuming no, right? Polonium, no. Yeah, you're nice and chill. Okay. We want to go over a block. And here is where we want to be. So I'm not going to connect the pressurized tube yet. We're just going to run it in case, you know, we decide we don't like it. See, I already decided I don't like it. I'm already going to change what's there. I'm going to break you and just run you along the back. Right? Uh, actually, yep, did it again. We are well past the wrapping up point for this episode, I think. I wasn't expecting radiation, sorry. Okay, ultimate pressurized tube. You're going to connect to here. To here. To here. And, boop. Oh, wrong. Configurator items. Cool. So now he's draining. No gas stored. He's going to rapidly convert nuclear waste into polonium. And doing a good job of it, too. Polonium's filling up over here. So we had a lot of nuclear waste to burn through. Nuclear waste converts very quickly in the solar neutron reactor, by the way. So we don't have to worry too much about that. Remember, polonium is also radioactive, so don't break pipes with polonium in them either. Bad times all around. All right, definitely wrapping up point. So for now, uh, if I turn you on, right, see how much water drains? And you fill up nice and quick. But because we're venting, we're dumping excess, we should be safe. You're converting a lot of nuclear waste into a lot of polonium. We just amped up our polonium production by a rate of 50. So 50 times faster. Not bad. Only one nuclear accident so far. Hopefully no more. But... I wouldn't count on it. All right, Devil 20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. We will come back next time. I don't know if we need to void the uh, water here, but I'm assuming what will happen is dump excess means any excess steam will just kind of into the environment and we shouldn't have to worry about it, right? So your temperature is going down. You still have some decent damage. I'm curious to see if this just eventually just sets back to zero because I'm assuming your damage is zero, yes. So eventually this will go down to zero, I guess. I don't really know. And then this steam will eventually, right, as this thing cools off, which he's doing, and you're cooling off, I'm assuming that they'll stop being steam production, right? All right, Devil 20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. For now, take it easy.